This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. You've been working hard all day and just arrive home totally exhausted. Just when you sink into the couch, you receive a text from your wife who's still at work. She's excited about plans for Valentine's Day tonight. You panic as you completely forgot. You pick up your iPhone and ask Siri to directly plan a date night that starts at 6 p.m. and finishes at 12. Siri recommends a great lookout spot to watch the sunset. It books your wife's favorite restaurant and then recommends an art gallery nearby afterwards. Of course, as we all know, this scenario is purely fictional. There's no way Siri could execute such a series of tasks automatically. But what if it could? With today's generative AI breakthroughs, this scenario is technically possible. In fact, in the last episode, we saw how a little orange device called the Rabbit R1 set out to do just that. The idea goes, ask the rabbit what you want and it will interface with your apps to complete the task on your behalf. Essentially, it's a voice-first, AI-powered device. As I highlighted in the second part of that episode, there's a fatal flaw with the rabbit. All of this functionality could just be integrated into a phone. Although nothing like the rabbit's functionality exists yet in a smartphone, it'll be coming soon enough. We've seen Google integrate AI into their Pixel phones, and Samsung do the same with the introduction of the Galaxy S24. So the question has to be asked, where is Apple in all of this? Although Siri is next to useless today, as you might have guessed, Apple is secretly cooking something up in the background. In this episode, we'll take a look at what they've been up to, and I'll explain exactly why Siri sucks. There's actually an internal staff revolt in the Siri department, so it's a juicier story than you think. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Microsoft and Google have been shouting the loudest about AI, but Apple has been quiet. The California company barely mentioned AI in any of their product launches, but behind the scenes, they've actually bought the most AI companies of all. Since 2017, Apple has bought 21 AI startups, while Microsoft has bought 12, Meta 11, and Google slash Alphabet just eight. Apple's been spending about $1 billion in AI ventures while remaining silent, from self-driving technology to voice design, music generation, and image recognition. These are just some of the specialties of these AI companies that Apple's been purchasing. There may even be more behind the scenes. This silence is typical behavior from Apple. They move last, but move decisively. They didn't invent the computer mouse, graphical interface, smartphone, tablet, or smartwatch, but they revolutionized all of these categories by doing it better than was done before. So what do we know about Apple's AI efforts? In August of 2023, Tim Cook revealed that Apple had been researching generative AI for years. On a call with investors, he said, quote, we tend to announce things as they come to market, and that's our MO, and I'd like to stick to that, end quote. While everyone was losing their minds over ChatGPT, Apple had been tinkering with similar concepts way before its release. Since 2020, the company assembled a foundational models team the goal was to develop conversational AI similar to that of ChatGPT, but with a focus on on-device machine learning and privacy. The team consists of 16 people, including former Google engineers. And the head of the team, John Janandrea, was previously head of machine intelligence, research, and search at Google. Bloomberg reported in mid-2023 that Apple has created a large language model called Ajax GPT. It's similar to ChatGPT or Google's Lambda but is said to outperform GPT 3.5. There's even chatter about Apple working on an AI-powered chatbot dubbed Apple GPT that's based on Ajax. Although there's a rumored release date of mid-2024, right now, it's still tightly controlled within the company. Apple has also quietly released frameworks and model libraries designed to run on its chipsets and may even bring generative AI apps to MacBooks. According to the information, multiple teams are working on various AI projects within Apple. So it's quite evident that there's been a lot of activity from Apple on AI behind the scenes. So what is going to be the best use of it? Well, Siri. Siri itself was an Apple acquisition back in 2010. Just one year later, the system was incorporated into the iPhone and it's been frustrating users ever since. It's ironic because back then, Apple was way ahead of the pack when it came to voice assistants. But now, well, I don't need to say much more. We'll talk about how Apple aims to improve Siri. But first, what is the deal with Siri? 
why does it leave so much to be desired? In April 2023, a bombshell report came to light that explained everything. You see, over the past five years or so, the Siri team within Apple has devolved into a dumpster fire. Employees and management would bitterly argue about the direction of the assistant, and in the end, no meaningful progress was made. Here's a summary of all the problems within the Siri team. Siri engineers weren't given tools to see how many users were using Siri and how often they were using it. Engineers would beg for more data to improve Siri, but leadership wouldn't hear any of it. Apple executives wanted to keep future developments of Siri on device. Having no network connection to a massive AI model run on a server put Apple's efforts at a disadvantage. Apple executives dismissed back and forth responses to Siri because it would be too difficult to control. Tim Cook himself, as well as other senior executives, refused to have Siri responses AI generated. Instead, they opted for a team of 20 writers to come up with canned pre-written responses. I guess that explains a lot. Apple's obsession with strict control over the user experience is at direct odds with the freedoms of generative AI responses. In 2019, Apple's design team repeatedly rejected a feature where users could report a concern or issue with a Siri answer. The machine learning engineers were essentially working blind and couldn't improve the system. So what was the reasoning for this decision? Upper management wanted Siri to appear, quote, all-knowing. Eventually, frustrations began building and employees began to leave Apple because they were too slow to make decisions about AI and were just scared of making mistakes. Tim Cook personally pleaded for disgruntled engineers to stay at the company, but they would eventually leave to work on large language models at Google. There was even an attempt to rebuild Siri from the ground up with a project called Blackbird. The project aimed to make Siri faster, lighter, and more modular. However, it was axed by two senior leaders on the Siri team who championed their own project, Siri X. This only focused on moving Siri's processing to on-device, and the rest of the Blackbird project was abandoned. And just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, the group working on Apple's mixed reality headset, the Vision Pro, were reportedly so unimpressed with Siri's capabilities that they considered creating their own voice system, and that's how you know it's bad. So all of these issues explain why Siri isn't doing too hot, and it's not for a lack of trying. There was just too much friction within the team, and to add insult to injury, it seems that Siri is only getting more dull. One of its most common phrases today is, sorry, I don't understand, or here are some results I found on the web. So what is the future of Siri then? Let's move on to how Apple can turn things around. Before we continue, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Apple getting into the AI space certainly is interesting, but have you ever thought, how does AI work anyway? Well now, there's a fun and easy way to learn about that, and other STEM subjects with Brilliant. Brilliant's course on artificial neural networks is perfect for that. I've used it to brush up on some background context when making episodes on AI, all the way back in 2020, when we were talking about GPT-3 before it blew up in the media two years later. Brilliant has interactive STEM courses in anything, from maths to computer science and general science. Whether you just want to brush up on learning or need a refresher for your career, Brilliant has you covered. You can get started free for 30 days, and the first 200 people to sign up get 20% off an annual plan by visiting the URL brilliant.org slash coldfusion. Thank you. Now back to the episode. According to Mark Gurman's Power On newsletter, the upcoming iOS 18 might introduce significant updates to the iPhone. According to Gurman, Apple's generative AI technology could significantly improve Siri, but that's not all. As per a report by The Information, Apple plans to use large language models to make Siri smarter. So ideally, Siri should be able to perform complex tasks from a simple voice command. If this becomes a reality, it would be a significant leap forward for Siri, but it also means that the Rabbit R1's days are numbered even sooner than I first predicted. Even the AI companies purchased by Apple on their shopping spree indicate a big Siri push. So far, we know that Apple bought Inductive to improve Siri's data, Voices to help Siri understand natural language, and PullString to make Siri features easier to implement for iOS developers. After the conflicts within the Siri team, these advancements could be a welcome change for Apple and Siri users worldwide. Speaking of which, one incredible advantage that Apple has over its competitors is that they already have devices in the hands of over a billion users. With that in mind, Apple can finally leverage on-device or edge AI. 
Unlike cloud computing for large language models, Edge AI runs on the device, eliminating the need for cloud servers or an internet connection. This can offer faster, more secure, and more reliable performance for AI computing. Apple has splashed $200 million to acquire Xnor AI. This was to improve its on-device processing capabilities. As we know, Apple now has ARM-based chips with custom neural processing units built for their laptops, watches, phones, and tablets. Being in complete control of both hardware and software components gives a tighter integration and efficiency than the competition. It's a great position for Apple to be in for on-device AI systems. This aligns with the visionary and pioneer in computer science, Alan Kay's philosophy. He once said, quote, people who are serious about software should make their own hardware. Now, on-device large language models have been done before, but they perform sluggishly and aren't ready for the prime time. Though Apple researchers may have cracked the code, they've managed to squeeze a large language model into a MacBook. But not only this, it runs four to 25 times faster than standard models, depending on if it's GPU or CPU focused. The Apple researchers released a paper on it. They managed to do this by using a few clever techniques, including storing the model in the device's flash memory instead of RAM. The Apple researchers also claim that they can run models that are two times larger than the computer's physical memory. It sounds impossible, but I'll leave a link to the paper below so you can see how they did it. Siri has been stagnant uh, function-wise for many years, and this could be a major breakthrough uh, that provide much better iOS or um, across Apple device user experience. Uh, our view is that if you have a tool like OpenAI, uh, that's hardly a point of differentiation uh, in a couple of years. Everyone will have a, its own large language model uh, similar to ChatGPT. So Apple's advantage is very unique compared to other model builders. They have devices in the consumer's hands, uh, billion plus consumers, and once they have features embedded in iOS, for example, you have that feature pushed out to billions of devices and uh, uh, you know, well over hundreds of millions of users overnight. And that is a market access advantage no one else has. Going behind the scenes, it's clear that Apple is not sleeping, but this is the furthest behind I've seen them in living memory. AI does move fast, so it'll be interesting to see how they deal with that, along with the internal conflicts within their Siri department. So what do you think? Is Apple too late? Or do you think they'll surprise everyone with a polished take on AI? Could their version of AI be smarter and faster? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Anyway, that's about it from me. If you want to see anything on science, technology, or business, feel free to subscribe to Cold Fusion. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.